so don't go around the toppers listen to them make a note of the book list or checklist or whatever it is but what are you lacking nobody else can say only you in your sleep just before your sleep you'll know what exactly is lacking in your preparation ask yourself that question one day two days three days one week one month fine but some day you'll know i think i should do this the moment you get that thought and you're still not doing it get out of the race there's no point so and if you got that answer and you still you if you want to make an effort make it you'll be through hi everyone welcome to another episode of rba interview series 2022 today i have uh, prashant akki with me who has cleared rba 2022 examination aur aaj ka interview thoda alag hone wala hai today's interview is not about the examination per se it's not going to be about his strategy to clear the examination this interview is going to be about the personality required to be not only a successful officer at rbi or any other government job but to be to be a good human being and to be a good officer uh, in these government organizations working for the people working for the society so if you're really interested in figuring out whether you are a good fit uh, if you're aspiring for these jobs whether you belong here will you be happy here what kind of personality you have versus what kind of personality rbi looks for then this is the interview for you this is the discussion for you before starting with the uh, in-depth questions uh, let me introduce uh, let me ask in fact uh, prasant to introduce himself to you uh, to tell you about himself about his education about his life experiences prasant first of all congratulations on the selection oh, thank you sir uh, can you just tell the stu- students a little bit about yourself where have you got educated and what have you done since then so i have done my with a computer science and msc economics from bits pilani so it's an integrated degree sir um though i have done msc economics it was not the financial economics so it was more of a welfare economics that i was interested in um more of a, a social angle to the economics that i have read so um, this is after that i started my upsc preparation so for 5 years i was 4 years i was into upsc Uh, after upsc i have uh, i have i've written mains then uh, i couldn't clear it then i realized uh, uh, it's time to take a break or i started my own ngo um, which is an orphanage it runs in orphanage today uh, along with my family and then um, then i was giving some other exams but last year i realized it's time to um, it's, it's running successfully so i thought i need to settle down to in my profession So then I um, started the preparation for other exams, and uh, today I'm in here, settled down probably in my professional life, trying to find uh, a better growth in personal life. So what exactly pushed you or pulled you towards RBI? What was it? Because uh, as you said, uh, you were into social welfare and you started an orphanage with your father. Uh, what was what was the pull that you that you thought that okay RBI can probably satisfy? a lot of my needs a lot of my requirements uh, not only financially but uh, giving me a purpose uh, yeah. those kind of uh, aspirational requirements oh. so whether it's ias or you know upsc or uh, a lot of people write other exams or even banking to that extent so it is all about creating a, a kind of um, your own stamp on the kind of service that you deliver so uh like i i'll actually answer your question better by quoting what i said in the interview i quoted that one of the interview panels asked almost the same question why are you here you have you have been into other, other domains you shouldn't have been here then i said uh, sir i remembered some random quotation i asked him sir can i actually quote someone i remember saying so i said a functioning economic democracy is a foundation of social democracy so unless you have a very vibrant banking system or a very uh, vibrant financial democracy any social reform is impossible so somehow i felt uh, upsc and rbi are not opposite directions they are in the same path towards delivering the best to the public mm. so that's why i thought after RB, after upsc my plan b should only be rbi mm. nothing else so uh, after that i have written only two exams which is ssc cgl and rbi 
I didn't write any third exam, any fourth exams. Mm -hmm. That's it. So after the civil services, it was only CGL and then RBI, and I've cleared both of them. So this is it. This is the plan B that I've decided. A very a very straightforward question, and uh, I think it's it's going to be beneficial for everyone if we have a very honest answer. Now that you'll be working in RBI, you'll get a very good pay that you probably have not received yet because you've not worked anywhere in the past. One lakh plus is what RBI officers get. Uh, you'll have a good house and everything, all the amenities. What do you think should be the uh, should be the idea of spending that money or using that money for for people in general yeah. or according to you what would you do without that money sir today uh, there is no deficit for financing sir we have uh, social financing that's also taking a big boom so it's not about my money being spent end of the day i think everybody in any job should sleep with the satisfaction and wake up with an enthusiasm so whatever you do whatever you earn um, you do something at the end of the day uh, that small walk with your wife or uh, or a girlfriend or just a kind of uh, happy time with your family or a kind of social service whatever you do sleep with the satisfaction you wake up with an enthusiasm to go to job again so i think that is the most important driving force one should have and in that direction uh, i don't know because it's not only my decision on how i want to use my salary it depends on many circumstances but for my objectives i don't think my salary will be the only source it will be the initial push but any activity can only sustain through social financing or any financing that so if people trust in your idea definitely they are they are ready to push you so today i said i we started an orphanage so it's running successfully it's running on its own um only because people trust it it's running in surplus now without even asking anybody for a penny because people trust the idea they're willing to come forward so i i still believe the the idea is still the idea of the uh, people are not willing to help the social service is not right people are in earning more and they are willing to spend more mm -hmm. we just have to provide them the right platform i ask this question because uh, you know when we make videos uh, we, de we we do a background research on what kind of videos we should make what is the student looking for and surprisingly but unfortunately the maximum number of views come from salary videos okay so uh, majority of the aspirants are looking for a job with a good salary uh, even though i don't think majority of them or a lot of them might need that kind of money or it won't matter if you are earning 80000 or versus 1 lakh it, it, both of them are going to be in surplus so what is your take on that uh, are we going in the right direction by thinking like that as aspirants so as aspirants i feel it comes from different backgrounds people come from different backgrounds so i believe we should never question one's rational before selecting mm -hmm. some people might want to clear an rbi job or let's say some people want to clear an upsc merely because they want money merely because they want to be corrupt uh, whether it's right or wrong it's wrong but we can't change them mm -hmm. so sir and do, do they require that um, that much amount of financial support i believe everybody has own their own standing let somebody wants to go to singapore or some other trip every year mm -hmm. and it will cost around 5, five lakhs mm -hmm. 6 lakhs for for every trip and if you are not earning 1. Point like 1.5 lakh per month you cannot go for a singapore trip just a one week trip mm -hmm. so to go for a one week singapore trip you are working for 365 days mm -hmm. so money is required a lot of times mm -hmm. but what is important is your idea you earn big but al along with that create an idea that can create an impact so if you can do that enjoy with your money mm. so i believe uh, the untapped potential is not the um, is, is not the um, money that is going to social sector mm. but it is the idea and the kind of uh, support that we need to give mm. just teach two hours per week mm. that's enough every sunday two hours go teach a kid that's mm. enough mm. so i don't believe uh, um, in any financial standing of a person should be questioned mm. but if he is doing something good that he should do because we owe back something for for for, for the nature giving us so many things mm -hmm. i i deserve i mean i think we all deserve to the nature deserves to be given back a bit from our side mm -hmm. coming back to the preparation yeah yeah bit, sir i think uh, we discussed so much of the other stuff uh, you prepared specifically for rbi should i say that you prepared for rbi only for two months or you prepared for 
RBI including other examinations for three years and two months? What would be the right way of putting it forward? Okay, sir. So, um, in I prepared for SSC and RBI. So RBI notification was very sudden. So I was not anticipating it. I, I had uh, April 2022 had CGL prelims. May 2022 had RBI prelims. June I had RBI mains. And again July August first week I had CGL mains. So four months I had four exams. So technically I prepared for RBI only two months. Before that I didn't touch finance. I didn't touch management. I didn't touch ESI. So the text textbooks part, yes, I have trained myself for only um, two, two and a half months. But that's a wrong way of putting it, sir. I believe um, the entire preparation. I think uh, I think this is a this this answer will cover up the entire RBA preparation. So I divided. I, I can say I we divide the entire preparation into three parts. One is the information assimilation. The second is the knowledge that you gain. The third is the training. So for each of the the RBA exam is a is a assimilation of UPSC banking exams and some other exams because it requires all three things sir. Mm -hmm. in RBI in, in UPSC you do not require so much of training mm -hmm. you practice a bit but that's not the training that you want to go so but here you need require a lot of training for certain areas mm -hmm. so information assimilation is required for areas like finance and management you don't require knowledge but for management you read certain things you retain it and you recreate it in the exam you're through it so certain areas like management certain areas like static part of banking awareness, certain areas like static part of finance, all these require information assimilation. And that happened for a long time. Everybody, the viewers here are preparing for UPSC, preparing for banking exams. So saying that I prepared for RBA for only a few months or a year is not right. So they are in this process of information assimilation for quite a long time now. Now coming to the knowledge, acquiring knowledge. So acquiring knowledge comes from that critical analysis of things around you. So I think uh, the backbone of entire RBA preparation is this analysis. Let's say um, just we were just uh, me and my friends were discussing about stubble burning. So stubble burning, we all talk about. Okay, there are alternatives. Why are farmers doing it? Farm. Some people um, criticize it. Some people support it. Some from farming background support it. Fine, that's all fine. But there needs to be a fundamental question on why only wheat? Why is the stubble burning only in Punjab? Why not in Andhra Pradesh? Why not in other areas of the country? So there are several issues like that that we need a fundamental question upon. Why is only certain sections behaving in certain way? So there are several questions that needs to be answered from very grassroots fundamentals. That's where your knowledge acquiring comes into picture. Mm -hmm. So from um, the areas here are let's say descriptive part of finance, descriptive part of ESI, English descriptive, and interview. All these are deep rooted into knowledge acquiring. Your information doesn't really help there. So if they say why is Indian sector, why is Indian banking sector so strong now? Is it, how is it compared to 2008? Uh, your your answer should not be based upon some factual information. Your answer should be based on the knowledge you acquire. Uh, when the rupee depreciated so much in 2018, our, our banks went into losses. Today, in spite of rupee depreciating, I think only one bank last quarter was in losses. All banks are in profits. So the profitability of banks is increased. So this analysis of profitability compared to their general NPA and all that. Why is the profitability increasing now compared to then? So all this questioning, where is the, the, everything that goes around, if you start questioning and um, acquire knowledge, that will help in these areas of descriptive English, descriptive ESI, descriptive f &M. mm. and to an, to an extent in the general awareness. And the main important part comes in the training. Uh, training, I think, is very important for prelims preparation. Those who are not able to clear prelims, who, they don't lack in information. So don't go around sources. They don't lack knowledge. They may not. They may. I do not know. But definitely they lack in training. So what is important in training, I believe, is um, let's say you take a question in general awareness. You are uh, eliminating two options and you are not able to eliminate the other two options. And then kicks in your ability to answer those, the risk aversion that you have undergone, that you have trained yourself for. That will give a, a result in the exam. So. Uh, fundamentally, it's all about putting yourself in uncomfortable situations and trying to train yourself. Over the time, over the time, over the time, you'll be able to face crisis easily. So, well, like there are several parallel threads in training. Let's say for uh, uh, quant ESI, quant and uh, reasoning and English, especially for quant and reasoning. 
you kind of train yourself by using a stopwatch. You use a stopwatch. Def every question you solve should be with a, with a stopwatch. If you don't buy a stopwatch, that you are not preparing for prelims. You are only preparing for general SSC or other other exams. Here for you, solving each question in a stipulated time. If you are not solving it, going back, solving it again, 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 again and again till you reach that time where fine. Now this is the ideal position. So that's training with a stopwatch. Similarly, attempting general awareness questions, unknown general awareness questions, not the ones you trained, not the ones you read. Still trying to attempt them, like tagline questions, SBA tagline, you eliminated two, there are two more options. Now you think about what kind of, in these two, what could be the answer? Reading the words, reading between the words, comparing those, comparing them. You go into the detail that the question tries to communicate with you. You kind of develop a connect. Why is the, evaluate, why is the examiner giving this question? Why did he choose to give this option? Why did he not choose to use some other word there? Is there interplay of words? All these will come into your mind when you're training your mind to solve those questions. So that training is important. So I, so to summarize, sir, it is all about information assimilation for certain areas, knowledge acquiring for certain areas, and training your mind for certain areas. So especially like ESI. ESI objective last year was um, a totally mind-boggling paper. Mm. Uh, it was not tough. It's, uh, it's unexpected. So some people say uh, syllabus is a Bible, follow it, take a printout and read every word. That works for other exams like State Public Service Commission, UPSC. Here the finance is so diverse. If a question is coming, given in the exam hall, you cannot say it's out of syllabus. Nothing in the world is out of syllabus for RBI to an extent. So here uh, uh, these areas like ESI requires more of um, general knowledge acquiring rather than looking at the syllabus and trying to read them. So that's it, sir. To summarize, information assimilation, knowledge acquiring, and training your mind. So in which area you in, in which area you're weak at? That you need to know first, then correct it, then try to answer it. So my technically my preparation lasted for two and a half months for RBI. My training lasted for two and a half months for RBI. My knowledge acquiring and information assimilation lasted for few months or years. Mm. That's it, sir. Wonderful. Uh, coming back to the fundamental aspect for uh, not only RBI but any examination that you study for, specifically government exams because of the sheer competition that you see. So, when a student, normally there is a life cycle that we see, a student starts at some point, he goes through some failures and then he realizes, okay, this is what I lost or this is what I did wrong and then he corrects them. So, if you can put it in words, uh, what is missing and what is uh, present when a student starts and what eventually develops in the student uh, so that he is able to clear the examination. So what exactly, uh, you know, can the student save time by developing certain personalities or certain behaviors when he starts for the exam? So when we start our exam, we're all in the same boat, but slowly uh, we start reaching different destinations. Or we start as, as someone said, one degree deviation will reach you. You will reach a different continent in itself after mm -hmm. for a long distance. Mm -hmm. That is what is happening, sir. So we travel long distances of two years, three years, four years, five years, six years. Now one degree of deviation, five in five years you're somewhere else. You are nowhere closer to somebody. You're not even closer to the destination. So um, what is required? I believe uh, so. There is a sense of sincerity that is required. Not that I had it on day one. Uh, after three years of uh, UPSC preparation, I realized this is something that I'm lagging. So what is important is that sincerity, not the real seriousness. A lot of people say be serious, be serious. But if you're serious today, let's say you'll be serious for a week or, a, for, a, or for a month. Uh, serious is not about, sincerity is not about not going to a movie or not enjoying, and not having, not sacrificing so many things. You may have to do that if required. But what is important is being sincere in being true to yourself. So to, 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 to see the difference between sincerity and seriousness, I think it's about if you, you have a deadline and you are very seriously studying for it. Once you reach the deadline, your seriousness drops. But once you are sincere, you don't have that excitement. You are just sincere. You know what to do. You know what you are doing. You know what is lagging. You know you are not ready for it. You are ready for it. You know what exactly you will do. And once you reach the point, again, I think it will continue. Mm -hmm. There will be no substantial difference. So, 
having sincerity is more important sir or in simple words don't stay in a comfort zone uh, if one week or one month you're in comfort zone you're doing something wrong come out of it let the marks tell you you're doing something wrong let the marks tell you or marks or mock tests or your faculty or something have a deadline or have a have a kind of check on yourself whether you are moving in the right direction mm-hmm. um you'll be a frog in a well you'll not know what's happening outside the well mm-hmm. if you are just keep studying 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 seriously mm-hmm. so you should have the sincerity to come out of the comfort zone see what is lagging in you what is that the examiner wants what is that you are lagging what is that is required to bridge that gap uh I, this might be a very simple thing in fundamentals i'll tell you practically sir my option was mathematics and uh, uh, it was my it was my very weak area that i realized after 3 years mm-hmm. the beginning of 3 years i thought it was very strong area i scored very well my colleagues who studied with me are in good position now uh, i couldn't crack it that's because i realized if i get a gap of 2 3 months i'll have to read the entire maths again i'll have to read entire redo the maths again for such a person maths or mbbs or any lengthy options will not suit you even if you give a one year of gap just few weeks of brush up and you are through it already for such people you will this will this will be best so this your realization you will get only when you are sincere and see what is exactly lagging mm-hmm. so a lot of people change option after five attempts i think if you are sincere in your effort early in your preparation itself you will know where exactly to stop and where exactly to change back Mm-hmm. to come back to the path mm-hmm. talking about change or in fact let, let me uh, you know rephrase it uh, i was thinking about this entire journey and one degree deviation so i was thinking about that person who deviated by one degree and now is somewhere else and he must be in so much stress uh, probably he can see the other person who's going uh, you know on the right path but he cannot go there anymore how did you deal with that because you went through a lot of failures uh, when you started your preparation and then you eventually eventually found your true, true personality or got a glimpse of it yeah so yeah i understand uh, sir the in jan i was in that stage jan 2022 uh, after ssc cgl last year tied to i kind of broke down i said this is it's not going anywhere uh, i'm not scoring well then i pushed a little bit more after one month i realized i'm not actually being that sincerity was there for upsc but then i after i entered into rbi or cgl preparation you need that uh, sincerity plus training that is required so once you are already in a wrong path a little bit different path now come back and then sit down on training in practical words use a stopwatch for your maths use try solving questions that you have never tried you will solve so unless you come out of your comfort zone and do things that are required for the exam you will never you are you will never reach back to that path again mm-hmm. so to someone who for someone who wants to come back to the path again i think what is required is um, the ability to be very rational and brutal to your own true self mm-hmm. you you deep inside you know what is lagging mm-hmm. deep inside you know that you are not capable of something that you are achieving but because of so and so reasons either you correct the reasons or you leave the goal very simple i remember uh, a line by david goggins is very popular nowadays he has recently come out with a book of his own and uh, he said that every morning i would stand in front of the mirror and curse myself and i would shout at myself and i'd tell myself what am i doing wrong and in that process the real me would come out yeah the actual reasons behind my failure or my success would come out uh, so that was something very <coughs> unique which i think majority of us fail to do yes sir i agree uh, because we're so engrossed there's so much happening around us so we stay so so busy with everything happening around us and especially our our, our own circle sir it's always good to have positive people around you mm. it's always good to have people who can tell you um something is missing in you mm. so for you to hold back pause a bit think about think over then try to rectify it then move on if that doesn't happen i think you're already too far to correct you'll be too late yes how important is stability to you or how important was stability to you when you thought of these this exam or other examinations stability in terms of job stability that you'll get paid no matter what you do 
So uh, uh, if you want to work and just earn money, you can do it using any job. So that the confidence I had. Any day if I went, maybe I'll get forty thousand per month. It's still okay. So that confidence I had, sir. But what was more important is the pressure that the family has gone through for five years, six years. You're into this, and you still didn't didn't get a job. Um, people around you are pushing you, your your family and all that. So it was a tough time. But I I as everybody feels it, sir. There's no answer for it. You just your success has to speak. So I asked my dad hundred days of time in uh, April, and uh, exactly on near near on hundred days, my mains happened very successfully. CGL also happened very successfully. I told him I will definitely uh, clear it. You see the results. So that hundred days I lost around six to seven kilos of weight. So though I was eating almost every week four or five biryanis, mm. so they they you have to undergo stress. you have to take that pinch you have to lose weight you have to feel dehydrated you need that pain sir if there's no pain there's no success so what to hona hi hai unless uh, there's a famous telugu poem that i can't uh, tell it now but that says where there is uh, happiness where there is comfort there education cannot reside mm-hmm. education and comfort cannot go together mm-hmm. so some point of time you need to feel that discomfort some dissonance in mind something some kind of pinch that says push a little harder because only then you will be desperate enough to try yeah, something exactly. new exactly otherwise yeah if you're in your comfort zone you won't you, right. won't, you, you won't believe it um, my high i have a bunch of sisters my cousins or my friends so they kept telling me how do you complete so big books in such less time uh, for rbi i remember uh, two days after two days after i had rbi prelims i opened it, i i took a print out of 200 page book and i come by next day morning 10 i said i'm done so the whole point is not reading print to print mm. from that book what does the exam demand what is that i have what is that is missing if can this book fit into that if they, if, if if yes then pick up the book try to brush through the book then see what is really again required do it again so that ability to come out of comfort zone because taking a print out of a 200 page book two days before the exam is definitely not any of us will even think of doing mm. lot of people lot of faculty will say don't touch a new book or uh, rbi is not such an exam giving only one month of time for prelims and mains no other exam in the in the world you will clear it with such short span with such huge syllabus mm. finance management descriptive objective psi english such they go subjects in just one month you are uh, you would have no choice but that comes only when you are actually uh, coming out of that comfort zone and saying i have to do it i'll do it no matter what So that hundred days was like do or die. So unless you really feel that pinch, sir, you'll always be in that race. Uh, you know, I remembered another interview. I was taking it, I think, in Mumbai two three years back, and uh, this student was already working in a bank, and you know how demanding the banks are nowadays. Yes. And uh, I asked him, how did you manage after phase one between phase one and phase two? So he told me, I would come back at nine p.m. I'll sit and study. Uh, I'll start my studies by ten. For one month, continuously, I study till two o'clock, three o'clock. I'll get up at six, study again. So he was ready for that grill. He was exactly. ready for that hustle. He already had made up his mind that three hours is enough, and it is enough. Of course, you cannot go on with it forever, but for months you can. Definitely, sir. For two and a half months, if you are preparing for RBI, for two months, you need to kind of. Um, forget the all the comforts that you have been through kind of eight hours sleep you had kind of morning coffees you had kind of comfortable breakfast you had that is that all should should not come into your mind you give an incentive uh, only when you kind of reach a certain target complete and complete your economy static part in four days go eat a biryani so have a kind of because this two and a half months sir it is a very intense time so unless you are very true to your own self you are your own mentor people you somebody can guide you but mentoring is different from guiding so that only self mentoring can work for rbi nobody can tell you they will only tell you what to read but for rbi especially when there is descriptive pattern it will not work since we talking about uh, personality we talking about behaviors we talking about uh, 
uh, an ideal way of preparing or uh, how should we go about it interview is a personality test so how did your interview go what were the questions what was the what was the direction of the interview and uh, were the panelists uh, satisfied with the way uh, you try to differentiate yourself from others so my interview went on very interesting so it was it was a very interesting conversation between me and the panel <clears throat> so firstly sir biodata was the first step so while preparing biodata i was in i started from scratch i wrote first draft second draft third draft fourth draft finally on fifth draft i guess i finalized it so every word was very carefully drafted for example photography was my hobby i didn't write photography i wrote fine art photography so i want to make a point so every word i use in the um, in the biodata like uh, yeah um, i have done two uh, research papers on uh, women workforce and agriculture marketing farmers those are my areas of interest so i made sure that those were on the top uh, top on the on, on the page and even then which should i prioritize which should i give the second order so biodata was very carefully drafted and then to the interview hall i think it's not about how prepared are you it's about how confident are you so i remember a person my fellow in one my interview day he was asking every person who comes out of the interview hall how was your interview how was your interview he was so scared of it his interview obviously didn't go well so he was almost on the verge of uh, he was shivering and he didn't go well at all so more than what you have read how it's going to go it is about the confidence so i gained confidence by reading four newspapers newspapers also helped me in that knowledge acquiring not the information information you get it through websites and several institutes but knowledge in, knowledge came through through the newspapers of business line business standard financial express indian express so these four newspapers i have read for at least one and a half month before the interview so that i can get into the groove of what's happening because i felt a sense of confidence that i am reading the same newspaper that the interviewers are reading that is their source of information this is my source of information same source of information so there is no scope of mismatch mm. so there in fact there was an instance where uh, the interviewer asked me where did you read this from i said sir general newspapers he said good so um, that 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 so the, the sense of confidence with which you go to the interview comes when you are actually preparing through these the general happenings around you so i would definitely recommend go through at least two financial newspapers before you go to the interview one one and a half month before the interview not that you that will be asked in interview but because you go with a sense of confidence to the interview and about my interview sir um most of the questions 95% of the questions were part from the biodata on uh, agricultural marketing on um, but more than what they asked um i want to say two points here number one uh, all my mock interviews i gave around four four to five mock interviews and almost all of them gave me a unanimous review that i i speak more more descriptive than being very objective but that worked big time in interview i can confidently say i scored very good marks in the interview though the marks are not out yet uh, that's because uh, um i have given answers that made the interview panel ask more they were hungry for good answers and i i kind of satisfied their appetite so i'll give you a small example sir um there was a old man in the interview panel i don't know any of the names of the interview panel so mm. forgive me for that so he asked me what do you prefer what do you think is more important agriculture marketing or agricultural um productivity because i made a point about these two before so every word that came out of my mouth was very calculated so then i i took a stand saying agriculture productivity is more important he said no no marketing is more important then we had a small debate there then the other lady in the interview panel she came forward she was interested what was happening she was trying to listen to both of us mm -hmm. then i made a small example sir let's take a small bright red apple so the apple uh, the customer wants a very bright red apple it looks so good and to produce that you need more fertilizer so the farmer he uses more fertilizer this year it will be good what happens to next year third year the productivity will go down then he will have to leave the land fallow then you'll have to add more fertile more manure to the soil so somehow he'll end end up into losses so there's a overall the productivity is low no matter how great is agricultural marketing it will not help 
I took a China example. India versus China. Where, 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 where did these two countries were 25 years ago? Today they have three, three times more the produce. In spite of having less uh, irrigated area and less um, total agricultural area than India. Mm. So where, why did it go so far? Public investments. All these discussions happen. So these interesting conversations. The interview panel wants that any mind to speak out something really interesting. Mm. They know what is repo rate, what is reverse repo rate, but they want something interesting from you. They want some practical applications and um, kind of um, just that that they have never uh, imagined from a kind of they would have never interacted with 25 year old person for uh, I think more than 25 minutes in their life. Mm. So in that 25 minutes, you need to create interesting conversations. That's yes. what I believed in. Not just answer the question. Yes. So this is first thing. And the second thing that I want to say: every word you speak should be calculated. Mm. Like uh, they asked me to SWOT analysis of Indian economy. General question, people can choose to say anything. I chose to say such things that I am well prepared upon and I am sure that next questions will be based on that. So I chose, again I have uh, selected agriculture because that's my strong area. So though that's not the biggest problem of Indian economy, but I chose to say it because I know if questions are asked based on that, I will be able to answer it. So my interview had uh, questions on agriculture marketing. Agriculture versus agriculture marketing versus produce, as I said, also based on rural women, um, unemployment, labor force participation rate, why it's decreasing, or is increasing. Then uh, it was on, I did a small job on uh, uh, marketing. So they asked me, what is the company? What does it work on? It works on relationship counseling and all that. How does it help banking sector? I was, pre I was prepared for those questions. Then they also asked on uh, fundamental a uh, question came on why everybody has this debate on uh, why RBI? How do you think it will fit into RBI? So this is a question that even till the night before interview, I was confused because I, I was really confused um, what to answer because the genuine answer is we need a financial stability. We need a pro professional job to also enjoy your personal life. But this can't be said in the interview. Um, so I was thinking of various answers. Nothing could fit well. Suddenly that day morning during breakfast, I could say, let's be sincere. This is the age to experiment. I experimented. That's what I said in the interview. So they asked me, you did, a, you did your B.Tech computer science, did your economics, that too, welfare economics. You did your research papers on agriculture and uh, farmers. Then an NGO, you worked in an NGO, you founded an NGO. Then to marketing, now into financial economics. What are you doing? Do you have clarity in your life? Do you think you will fit into RBI? That's when I said this. So I can't experiment at 40 of, at, at, at your age. So if not at this age, when will I experiment? So if you should, this is the biggest asset, sir. Having a knowledge about having an experience in so many domains. I know technology, I know fintech, I know financial inclusion. I know how a bank account is being uh, misused these days. Uh, I know how kids are being neglected and how financial inclusion can actually help orphans. So I know the financial inclusion angle, technology angle. I know the marketing business angle. I'm also doing business law as a part time. So that is only legal angle. So there are so many angles that I know it should be an asset. Why will it be a disadvantage? So if not at this age, I will not experiment anytime. So this is an age to experiment and I am experimenting mm -hmm. and I'm proud of it. Mm -hmm. So in one line, sir, how did my interview go? My interview went really well. That's because I was confident and satisfied about whatever I was saying and doing. That's why I think I spoke to nine people that day after the interview. After the interview, we were all sitting just discussing how did the interview go. Almost none of them said it went well. It, none of them actually said that it went well. I came out with a very big smile. So the interview, the RBA result day, I was not so excited because I knew it on the interview day I'm going to clear it. Mm -hmm. And uh, also for that interview, I think interview preparation, uh, one is your uh, Anu Jindal's mock interview helped. And along with that, your book, Anu Jindal's interview guide book that had questions. That was a kind of uh, a guide for me for creating crisp answers. I was uh, lucky or unlucky. I was I was not asked any technical question. Let's say somebody asked you, um, how does repo rate or define repo rate? You cannot afford to say it in two sentences. Define repo rate, you have to say it in half a sentence, mm -hmm. in one sentence. So technical questions have to be answered in very small crisp lines. You cannot beat around the bush. 
So the exact questions and answers to most of the questions were in your book. So in that way, the book really helped. And uh, the mock interview also helped. Mock interview also they gave me valuable suggestions about um, how to be uh, confident. It is they who are actually taking you, recruiting you. So they need you. There's no need of being any, uh, you're, no, you're no inferior. So because I had an issue of stammering before. So even I have it now, but uh, I in the interview, I didn't, I didn't stammer. Mock interviews I did. Mock interviews were very tough. Uh, so if you go confident to the interview and if you go happily, you will come out with double happiness. If you are scared of it, you will come out with double sadness. As simple as that. I uh, would like to make a correction there. Sir. Something that I uh, that stuck with me. You sure. said experimenting. Sir. I think exploring uh, is, is a better word or is a yeah, yeah. you know more Something that defines, something that helps us define ourselves and find ourselves. Because you experiment with your lives, then you then you either fail or you succeed. When you do an experiment, either it goes right or it goes wrong. But when you are exploring, it never goes wrong. Yeah. Uh, whatever you do, you gain something new. Yes, sir, yes. Like farmers Alva Edison bulb, as everybody knows. Exactly. I found thousand ways of how not to invent a bulb. Hmm. It's the same thing. If somebody asks you, did you fail four times UPSC? I said, no. I said, I, I, I have four ways of how not to do UPSC. Mm -hmm. It'll help people. Whoever is listening to this interview or my next generation or anybody, my friends or anybody, or my juniors who want to talk to me, they will know how not to prepare. Hmm. You know, recently I was uh, discussing with my teammates, including Manish and some others, and we were talking about what is the difference between India of now and United Kingdom, when it came to India and ruled us, the answer was exploration. They were not afraid of it. Yeah. The people of India now, they are so afraid. We are so afraid of exploring new grounds, of finding new ways of doing things, of inventing, of, as you said, going out of our comfort zones, that we are stuck, uh, you know, in mediocrity. Yes. The way they come, they came out of their mediocrity was by exploration. They were not afraid of risking their lives coming all the way to India and then ruling, uh, you know, a foreign land. So that's the difference. Uh, although they were brutal, but they were not afraid of doing something new. Yes, that, that should always be there. And and I think that's why the interviewers uh, loved you because uh, they, they could also connect with you because they probably did not do it or some of them might have done it. So they could connect with you, they could relate to it. Okay. This guy wants to do something that I could not do and I miss it. Or this guy did what, what, what I've also done in my life and I'm proud of it. In the entire interview, uh, the chairman actually, uh, I used the word uh, Dwakra. In South India, in Andhra, Dwakra means development of women and children in rural areas. Dwakra. That is synonymous to self help groups. That's mm -hmm. a local colloquial known name we use. I used that word and before even I started explaining the term, the chairman was very very serious. He said, never ever use acronyms in, in a conversation, mm -hmm. especially in an interview. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm sorry, sir. That was the only harsh kind of conversation we had. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is very common. After that, how you bounce back is important. Mm -hmm. Now he said that. Now I really said, I'm really sorry, sir. I, I, I'll make a note of it. I'll make sure it won't happen again. But I was not wrong. I didn't say that, but I said, but I'm about to say it, sir. Um, Dwakra means so and so, and I continued with self help groups and how their role, how their banking linkages, and all that. Mm -hmm. So, um, this entire when you have that sense of exploration, you are not scared of failures, you're not scared of, scared of falling down. You know, you've done nothing wrong. Somebody is correcting you, let them correct you. It's okay. Mm -hmm. So, that's it, sir. Any last tip that you would want to share with these students? Anything? based upon your personal experience, although we've talked about a lot, but anything that you feel we might have missed? Sir, I, I don't remember it now, but uh, um, I would like to reiterate that uh, in prelims, in phase one, training is very important. In phase two, knowledge are, is very important. And uh, the kind of information is, is, is important everywhere. But in interview also, this. In, in all these three, sir, the common thing is you need to kind of um, 
do an unconventional job of brutally analyzing yourself and then see what is going wrong so don't go around the toppers listen to them make a note of the book list or checklist or whatever it is but what are you lacking nobody else can say only you in your sleep just before you sleep you'll know what exactly is lacking in your preparation ask yourself that question one day two days three days one week one month fine but some day you'll know i think i should do this the moment you get that thought and you're still not doing it get out of the race there's no point so and if you got that answer and you still you you want to make an effort make it you'll be through so all that is required as i said that sincerity and the training that is required that's it sir thanks a lot uh, prasant for coming here and talking to me i had a wonderful time and i'm very glad that we could have a different kind of interview a different kind of discussion this uh, is students ko samajh aaye ki kaisi kaisi personalities hain jo ki rb exam clear karti hain government exams clear karti hain and where they can be i'm 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 very glad that uh, you invited me here and we had a conversation especially for uh, youngsters and or, or people or, or teenagers who are aspiring to be into civil services there is a lot of exploration here it's not a monotonous uh, uh, journey um, there is nothing called a failure here once you are into upsc preparation once you are into rba preparation you definitely become a better personality so a decade ago i was different today i am much more better in terms of even personal life so personally there is nothing to feel bad if you don't clear the exam any exam to that matter just be honest and happy about it nothing else and thank you so much for inviting me here i think we had a great conversation um so thank you so much thanks a lot so that was it for uh, today's uh, wonderful episode of rb 2022 interview series i'm sure you guys liked it and uh, i would be glad if you can put some comments in the comment section below and tell me uh, more about it what do you what do you feel about it uh, would you like to have more such interviews rather than the old school interviews where i ask about strategies and the way students prepared and cleared their rb examinations thanks a lot bye bye